Um, but uh, anybody that Robert Garcia has in his uh, boxing academy in Riverside, I sparred them all from 140 to 160. Who's your toughest opponent? Everyone's on YouTube right now watching all your fights, obviously. Saturday night's looming. Who would you say is your toughest opponent? Well, I fought uh, several world champs, and they're all tough in, in different ways. Uh, some were not necessarily tough fights, but tough losses. Um, you know, Canelo, I was overmatched, oversized. Uh, he, he's a good champion, and uh, he's gotten better. So he's uh, definitely a fight that I felt that, you know, the, the weight made the difference. Speaking of tough losses, I was going to say, like Canelo, how does that motivate you? Let's say uh, an opportunity against such a big name, how does that motivate you going against Keith Thurman to redeem for those tough losses? Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily it motivates me. Uh, I just have the experience. So whether a win or a loss, it's an experience. I've learned from it. I fought against, uh, you know, some good champions. And, uh, you know, I'm doing it again. And I'm ready for it. So how do you like the fight poster? It, it looks uh, pretty good. They had me, uh, they had a picture of me coming out the, the woods. Yeah. To fish hunting. And Keith Thurman said that uh, he doesn't get enough credit for being an outstanding boxer. He called himself an outstanding boxer. Uh, do you think, how would you rate his boxing skills? And part two to that question is, how are you going to convince yourself not to stand in the middle of the ring and do what you typically do? You know, uh, I think uh, overall, I wouldn't necessarily rate his boxing skills uh, specifically, but overall, he's, he's a good fighter. He's a good boxer. He moves good. He can punch. Um, but I think I'm also a good fighter, and I've gotten better throughout the, the last couple of years. So, uh, you know, I think those that haven't really stayed uh, stayed in touch with, with my last fights uh, will be in for a surprise. No one doubts you're a good, good fighter by any means, but... Some may say, I'm just being devil's advocate for the audience. Uh, sometimes uh, we feel you should box more, as opposed to being a Marcos Maidana type, you understand, know standing square foot in the ring, using your double jab, because you're a great athlete, you understand. Know um, why not more of that? You know, especially in those money rounds when you know he wants to slug with you and you're actually a talent, more talented boxer. Okay, in previous fights, uh, I had a different trainer. Okay. These past uh, three fights, I'm with Robert Garcia. And if you've seen any of my last three fights, I've watched you know, them all. It, it's, it's intelligence over, over uh, banging. You know, uh, I pick my spots. I'm a lot smarter in the ring. I've improved uh, overall in my boxing game. Uh, I'm, I'm a better fighter. So, I'm a natural banger. I love to get into, into banging uh, situations, but I'm also a lot smarter, so you'll, you'll see me pick and choose my spots. You said Robert Garcia and not Big G, though. Yeah, Robert Garcia is uh, basically my chief second. Big G, he's, he's there in the gym, but he doesn't really work anyone's corner, and I feel uh, feel special that, that he's out he's here today because he's only he's only with Mikey Garcia, man. And uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's really it's really an honor to have Big G in my corner. Uh, extra motivation, and like I said before, he's a boxing guru, man. And when he speaks. You soak in everything you can, and it gives you that extra push, that extra fuel that you need. My last question. When you go to bed on Friday night, how do you dream about this fight day outcome? You know, I do go over scenarios of a fight. Um, you know, it won't be easy for me, but it won't be easy for Keith Thurman. I'm going to win on Saturday. I think you got a couple more times on this fight. Are there any flaws? <laughs> are there any flaws that you see in Keith Thurman's fight style that you plan to use to your advantage or come fight night? There's some flaws. I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, you know, some people uh, like to like to bang, hit hard. You know, when you throw wild hooks, you can hit hard. You know. But you also leave yourself open for, for some punches. So, you know, I got to capitalize on the small mistakes that he does make because, uh, you know, every fighter makes small mistakes at least. And even though he's an undefeated champion, um, you know, we've done our homework. We've done our work. We've done the physical work, mental work. Everything's there for Saturday. Did you use, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just, I haven't spoken to you in a long time. Did you use, or Team Garcia and Josecito Lopez, did y'all use Abner Mares versus Cuellar? Uh, because I thought, and I told Robbie Garcia myself personally, right, that if I said that was between the Madonna, Floyd, and, and that, I think those are some masterful game plans. Was that, I, 
like being like the boogeyman, come forward strong. You say he got the strong left hook, but it's wide. But everyone picked Cuellar to win that fight, but Abner was the better boxer, ended up knocking him down in the 11th or 12th round and getting the unanimous decision. I believe we stopped stop him again. Yeah, going back to that fight, Abner Mares executed that game plan perfectly. Um, you know, we have our own game plan. Um, and I'm not going to go over it, but we prepared. We did We did the work. That That's where, where it comes off. You know, uh, some fighters can say they're going to do this and do that in the ring, but if you didn't prepare for it, it'll show. One of your biggest fans. <laughs> Mikey Garcia said you go to knock him out. What do you? I'm not laughing because he said that. I'm laughing because I keep on asking question after question. But uh, he said he was in the car somewhere, and I believe I heard he says you're gonna knock him out. You know the the people inside the gym with me, my uh, my team. They have the full confidence in me. I prepared. You know, uh, if if me being an underdog is is a motivation for me, and it has been. Uh, I love I love the position. So, uh, you know, it might be a surprise to, to a lot of people, but it definitely won't be a surprise to, to the group near me. Jose, you, you obviously are not afraid to trade with the biggest punchers. You showed that against Maidana, you showed that against Canelo, you did it uh, against Ortiz. Do you plan to have the same approach against Thurman, or do you plan to be a little more tactical? You know what, uh, it's above, above everything, it's intelligence in the ring. I'm going in there against a good fighter. I've improved myself, so uh, I'm a lot smarter. Uh, I definitely love to bang, so, uh, you know, whatever the situation arises, uh, I'll be ready for it. Robert Garcia won't be here. Uh, is there like a uh, spiritual deficit that could possibly be, be, be present Saturday night? Can you say you're a family, and one piece of the family is if grandma don't show up to Thanksgiving, everyone misses her. If Robert Garcia is a grandfather and he doesn't show up to Thanksgiving, does, will that affect you? Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, I trade in alongside uh, Big G every day, uh, and then Robert Garcia every day, and, and Pita Garcia every day. So, uh, you know, it's a family training environment. You know, uh, Robert Garcia will be missed, but, you know, like I said, there might be a realistic virtual image of Robert Garcia come fight night. Osito, people don't know this, but you heard three sparring partners. One retired from boxing, the other two got left injured. Do you think people will be surprised Saturday night? I think for those that don't know, that don't know the insides of, of training and training camps, uh, at least on my side, it might be a little surprised, but uh, you know, I prepared well. We've got uh, some tough uh, sparring partners, undefeated uh, knockout artists uh, in sparring, and I prepared well. I left no stone in turn. If you made the odds for this fight, how would, it's 16 to 1, but what would you make it? Is it 50-50? Is it 2 to 1? Is it 4 to 1? Are you the favorite? What do you think? I definitely wouldn't say I'm the favorite. He's a, he's a world champ. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of fighters talk nonsense. Uh, you know, before and after fights, but I'm realistic. I know I'm an underdog. I know odds are against me. I know my back's against the wall, but I'm ready for the moment. A 16 to one? I wouldn't say 16 to one, but I'm definitely ready. Were there any? Um, you go from the Sunshine State to one of the coldest states on the East Coast. Was there any challenges in make, cutting up the last couple of pounds uh, this week? Not at all. Um, the preparation, everything was done uh, prior to, to coming here. You know, it's mostly rest here, uh, here in New York, and, uh, you know, just anticipating the moment. Uh, you know, there's, there was a lot of weeks of hard work to, to get to this moment, and I'm ready to shine. Is the game plan to fight in segments, like the first two rounds, the second two rounds? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get a glimpse because Keith said uh, he doesn't understand where you get your confidence from. So I'm trying to help the audience understand. Like, the game plan to fight in increments. Hey, we got him. Let's get these first two rounds out the way. Let's win round three. Let's win. I don't know. Explain. Elaborate more. I wouldn't say that's the game plan, but win round by round. You know, every round is, is one one battle. You know, we got 12 rounds of battles. I got the best training team in uh, Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've had the, the best preparation that I've ever had, and I'm definitely ready for the moment. Round, and uh, I was like, Keith Thurman is an eloquent speaker. He's rhyming. He's rapping. He says K2. I mean, was it um, the face-off? It, it was pretty hilarious. What were your thoughts when he was r rambling about? Uh, he was saying that you would just sit there very stoic and listening and you didn't respond. You just let him just spill, just spill. What were your thoughts? 
Yeah, uh, nothing against Keith Thurman, but he's a talker. It's, it's fine. You know, uh, I'm not so much of a talker. Uh, you know, but I will bring action to the fight. Thank you. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank you for answering. What's the do you know? Do you know if there's an immediate rematch call? Should you actually win this fight? There is a rematch clause. You know, and. Uh, as much as I love Brooklyn, we could take this to LA afterwards, but you know, uh, we'll speak about that after the fight. It seems like he's interested in, if you were to get past you, the Pacquiao fight. Uh, if it went the other way around, would you? Would that be a fight that you're interested in? Obviously, it's a big payday, it's a fight that everybody would want to get. Um, if you were to beat Keith, maybe even twice, would you? is that a fight that you'd be interested in having? You know what? Uh, every every fight out there, opponent out there, is a possibility. Uh, I, I shy away from from no battle. But first things first, Saturday. I don't I don't plan ahead. And uh, you know, you can speak to me after that, uh, after after my fight on Saturday. There was a discrepancy, and uh, not a discrepancy, but some confusion when the Harrison fought Charlo about the rematch clause. Is there a four month it has to be enacted within four months? Is that it? Or yeah, there's a, you there's get a voluntary defense. Yeah, well, there's a there's a clause where it's several a few months uh, after the fight. But um, either way, I'm not planning ahead. I'm, uh, my work is Saturday night, and uh, we can speak afterwards. Uh, what does your wife tell you? You've been fighting for a long time, ups and downs, left, rights. What does your wife tell you going into the ring? Because you've, you've accomplished damn near everything in the sport of boxing. You done fought main events. You done fought the best fighters in the world. You done had some great wins. You done had some great losses. And you're still back on the main event. What do you tell your wife? What does your wife tell you Saturday morning or 6 o'clock Saturday evening? You know what? Uh, she knows that I put in the work. So no matter what comes of the outcome on Saturday night, I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to win. And, uh, you know, for, for those that, that don't really know, know me or know of me, they're going to know Saturday night. Hopefully they know you. If they know boxing, they should know you by now, man. You're Rocky. 